and welcome to another episode of Small Girl Big Talk. I want to talk about change today because that is something that I am experiencing and I know that everyone would experience changes. And I particularly wanted to come on and share about how I am going through changes and even though this is something that is very personalized to different people like I would not understand the kind of changes that you are going through considering we have very different identities like I would never understand what you've been through or where you're coming from but I guess what I wanted to share is like you know how I've been able to manage well with the changes that I've anticipated or I did not anticipate and you know just by sharing with you how I'm feeling about all of this and sharing with you what I've learned in the journey of dealing with it that you might feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. Now the reason that I have this topic in mind it's because I realized that I am going through a season where there are a lot of expected changes that is going through in my life. Like I am planning for a wedding, which means that I'm getting into a different stage in my life where I'm going to change my identity into being somebody's wife. It changes everything because we are born into a family but when you get married you have a new chosen family and I think that's a very huge change in a human's life. So that's a big expected change uh, that I have. And another one would be the fact that I am really aiming to transition into the identity of a content creator and also an entrepreneur on top of the day job that I have. As much as we would like to deny it, I think our identity is always very tied closely with our day job, like the job title that we have on our resume. Like as an adult, if you go out to a dinner party, the first thing that you kind of introduce to your new friends about you would be what do you do for a living? Because that's the easiest way to kind of explain to people which background you're coming from, who are the kind of people that you hang out with, what is your talent or your skill set or your strength in that you are able to, you know, trade and make money with, right? So you must be pretty good at what you're doing. And that gives us an idea of who you are as a person. So our job title does comes as a very big thing about us as a human being. So I was talking about how I am transitioning deeper into the identity of a content creator and I can feel that this is a process that you guys have been following very closely with me as well. Um, this is something that I expected it to happen but it is very scary because I didn't know what to expect because I've not been through this before. Same thing goes to the plan to get married. So I think when it comes to changes, right, what is scary about it is because our brains are so used to the way things are and it has identified our current routines and environment as a safe space because we've been able to live well in current environment and current circumstances very well already so when change happens it just automatically signals it as different be alert you know your nervous system your cell like communication they all have to be more alert because they are learning about this new environment or this new changes that are happening around you right but it doesn't necessarily mean that it is bad right I think the reason that changes are scary in a way, it's because changes means things are different. They are not the same anymore. And we don't know. We just don't know 
what is the different thing that is going to happen. And we are scared that it is not going to be good. We are scared that whatever comes up, it's not up to our expectations. It's not the way that we want it. But I've lived in this earth for like 31 years by now. And I feel like in my life, there were so many things that I wanted and I aimed it to be a certain way. But more than half of the things that happened to me were not anticipated. Like growing up as a kid, I would never have expected that I would become a student and attend university all the way in Canada. Like there was no way I anticipated that because I grew up in Malaysia My family's income level was not that high to the point that I feel like my parents can afford to send me to a university. Like I would never have expected that I could have gotten a scholarship that sends me all the way to Canada. Like I didn't even know Canada as a country much before I got a scholarship to even go there. That's one thing, right? And how would I have expected to have a fiancé who is all the way, like, you know, who grew up all the way in Brunei, which is a tiny neighboring country in, of Malaysia that I have only heard of and know nothing about. Now, and now I'm marrying someone who grew up there, even though he's a Malaysian. Like, these were all the things that I have never anticipated. And these are the best things that have happened to me. So I think like by reminding myself that this changes in life, like 60-70% of the time, they were not exactly the worst things. It, It helps me to feel like, okay, changes might not be as scary as I thought it can be. So yeah, like that's, that's one thing that I want to talk about. And so I recently read a book that uh, that is called 4,000 Weeks. Let's see. This is a book that is called 4,000 Weeks, right? And it is written by Oliver Berkman. I bought this book thinking that it is something that I can, that can help me to manage time better and to be more productive and to do things more efficiently. Um, But I was wrong. Um, I'm only halfway through the book. But this book really challenges the way that we perceive time um, and challenges the way that we perceive life. And there was this message in here that I felt was a pretty comforting thing to know. And I'm going to read a passage out of the book. Worry at its core is the repetitious experience of a mind attempting to generate a feeling of security about the future failing and then trying again and again and again as if the very effort of worrying might somehow help forestall disaster. The fuel behind worry, in other words, is the internal demand to know in advance that things will turn out fine, that your partner would not leave you, that you will have sufficient money to retire, that a pandemic won't claim the lives of anyone that you love, that you can get through your to-do list by the end of Friday afternoon. But the struggle for control over the future is a stark example of our refusal to acknowledge our built-in limitations when it comes to time. Because it's a fight that the warrior obviously won't win. You can never be truly certain about the future. When I read this passage, it really helped me to make sense of this worry that I always have about the future, about the uncertainties that I'm about to face. We are worrying because we want to kind of have this false security of knowing that things will turn out fine. And the truth is, we will never be able to read the future or to know what is about to happen. So by being able to understand 
the fact that this worry is just here as a cover, as a shield to protect you from all the potential mistakes and failures that, that you might experience. By being able to identify it, maybe it's easier than for you to kind of just let go of this fear and embrace the changes that are coming your way. These are the things that I found has helped me a lot as I am currently going through all these changes in my life. The first thing that I find very helpful is having a grounding routine where I routinely come back to a space where I am able to ground myself back to why I am doing what I'm doing who I am as a person and what are my values and you know what are what are what's the vision that I have for myself as I grow in this earth and who is the person that I want to grow into like I love having a weekly check-in or like a space where I can actually come in here and remind myself of these things and ground myself back to why I am going through all these things so that when things get scary, when things start making you question things in your life, right? This, are, this information about yourself is going to help remind you to keep on going. Because I think whatever changes you experience in life, whether it's the good or bad, right? There will always, it will always come with its own set of challenges and things that you are just not familiar with and you need to put in more effort to learn to deal better with it, it is going to make it easier for you to stay persistent in a journey because it reminds you like, okay, this is why I'm doing it. I can do it. Like having a grounding exercise helps you to stay focused and stay in a way like committed to this change that you have decided to go with. And definitely you would also want to be comfortable with mistakes or failures, like comfortable in knowing that mistakes and failures are going to happen and they are not necessarily the worst things. Instead of trying to avoid failure, what you really want is to learn to embrace failures and to be able to deal with it very wisely and to be able to process it so that you can learn from it sooner so that's one thing and i also think that by strengthening your core relationships right strengthening the relationships between you and the the people that you know are your ride or die whether it's your family members or your partner your children, your best friends, you know, friends that you know would be there with you in whatever decisions that you make. Friends who will be there with you through all the changes that you would be making. Friends that really gets you and wants the best for you. You want to really strengthen and drill down your relationship to the core because these are probably going to be your you know, your emotional strength, your emotional support as you go through changes. Changes are not necessarily bad, but it can be really uncomfortable. And during these tough times, you want to be able to have very transparent and honest conversations about everything that you are going through. And you want to have people that is able to encourage you and support you and try to make sense of all these changes together with you. So I am definitely very grateful that Kevin is a partner that I can talk about all these things, even though sometimes it's a little bit hard to get into the mood when it comes to things that I'm even scared of and I'm still not even clear of all these things that I'm thinking about. Like I don't even have a... Like, you know, sometimes... like say this change experience that I'm going through, right? I feel like there was so much fear and because of that, there's a lot of anxiety and because of that, it was making it tough for me to communicate with Kevin well in our relationship and I just I just didn't know how to start the conversation. Sometimes, sometimes it's just a little bit hard, but it doesn't mean that you should just not do it. Just because it's hard, you should still do it, okay? 
And I guess lastly, one more thing is you might want to also ask yourself like where is the line that you set as a boundary on what you are able to accept or not accept um, in whatever changes that happens in your life. Like what are the values that you hold close to yourself and yeah, like have a good idea about what are the things that you truly stand for and if these changes in your life are making you question everything, then maybe something is wrong and maybe you might need to get external help with it. Um, so these are the things that I have in my mind. And I think I also kind of want to address that there are unexpected changes that could happen in our life as well. And recently, I'm also, I was also going through quite a bit of it because a close family member of mine has like some medical conditions that was a little bit worrying and we had to go through days of waiting for test results and stuff like that and that completely turned my life around because I decided to you know put a hold on everything and go home and be there with family and such unexpected changes can happen and it can be quite stressful because All of your plans go haywire. There are a lot of things on your to-do list that are going to be backlogged. And at times like that, when I was going through that, I remember I just kept reminding myself that whatever it is, especially when it comes to the tasks that are going to be backlogged, like things will take care of itself. Life will still go on even if shit are not done, you know, and life will still go on. And going back to if you are clear with your why and your intention and what are the things that you place the highest value in life, that is going to help you to make better decisions in this process and support your decision along the way. I was able to remind myself that in this life, I'm always going to uphold my family in my life. Like nothing comes between us. If my boss is going to fire me because I want to go home and spend time with my family, so be it. Fire me because for me, my family is more important than everything else. And that's what I would always have done in my life. And one more thing that definitely has played a role in helping me in dealing with unexpected changes or expected changes, it's because I have faith. And that is because I truly believe that there is a God who is there to kind of, you know, have my back to guide me through this journey. And with whatever that happens to me, I know that it's kind of part of his plan that he allows for it to happen to me because he knows that I am able to handle it. And because I have this faith going on, right, I think it really makes dealing with all this changes and uncertainties and all these things that are scary um, you know it makes it less scary because I know that he's got my back but if you do not believe in God then perhaps in a way to explain it it could be you trust the universe have its plans for you and whatever is yours will always come back to you and there is always a season for everything um Whatever it is, find a way to have faith because that is going to make going through this journey a lot more comforting for you. So I feel like um, I'm kind of scattered brained, but I also wanted to come into this episode in a very casual way. Like I didn't even write a proper outline. I kind of just dumped some of the ideas that I have on my notebook and I wanted to come on and talk to you because... In a way, I am also challenging myself to be a better casual conversationalist um, with you guys because I wanted the words that I share with you and the messages that I share with you to come naturally with me through some guidance. Um, And I wanted this space to feel like you are really having a conversation with me and I feel like this is the most natural way to do it. Um, I hope I am making sense. These changes have been very interesting and very scary, but I'm also pretty excited to see how my life would be a year from now. Yeah, some really deep stuff tonight. and <laughs> I think that's all that I have for you. 
Um, oh, speaking of that, right? I wanted to also talk about change because next week onwards, I am going to have a wedding series over here on the podcast because. We all know that wedding and marriage is a big part of our adulting journey, and there's just too much that we want to talk about it. So, from this episode onwards, we are going to have four or five episodes that are related to my wedding diaries, and I cannot wait for you to join me and the guests that I'm inviting for that series、um, in our conversations because I really enjoyed them, like recording all these episodes. And、um, I think it will be very fun for us to talk about wedding and marriage as well, because that is one of the big changes that's going through in my life. Yes, so that's why I, I had this idea of this episode today. And I guess that kind of wraps up the episode because I've I've gotten to the point of why I'm doing this. So I'll see you in my episode next week. Goodbye.